Hi there, my name is Mr. Pete. I am a fourth grade teacher and I am currently reading the great Kate DiCamillo's The Tale of Despero. Please make sure you have your book in front of you. Please make sure you get the book. Buy these books. Kate DiCamillo is awesome. And the more you buy, the more she'll write. At least that's how I have it in my head. And, you know, she has a lot of amazing, amazing books. Uh, they're currently right now, and for those of you 10 years from now, it's not a current movie. It's just on the Disney Plus channel or whatever Disney's doing at that point. Um, there's this awesome book, which is made into a movie. The movie's fantastic, by the way, called Flora and Ulysses. This is one of her newest books. And um, it's not her newest book, but it is one of her newer books. And I love this book. It's got lots of wonderful il illustrations, as all of hers have. Um, but please, you know, join in the Katie Camillo, like, run of books, because all of her books, I've yet to come across a book that I haven't liked, but let's get to the one that I'm currently reading, The Tale of Despero. And we have, in chapters one and two, met Despero. We saw him born. We, we kind of fast forwarded to a point where he's older, where his aunt Florence and uncle Arthur are discussing about the disappointment that he is and we see that he has his eyes open always and he can hear sweet smells because his ears are big and because I'm getting the impression that, that he has this big, wonderful heart full of light and full of love. Chapter three, once upon a time. Oh, and a side note, I apologize for my terrible, 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 terrible voices, but I love doing voices with my readings. So just deal with it and have some fun with it yourself, all right? Once upon a time, chapter three. Despero's siblings tried to educate him in the ways of being a mouse. His brother Furlo took him on a tour of the castle to demonstrate the art of scurrying. Move side to side, instructed Furlo, scrabbling across the waxed castle floor. Look over your shoulder, all the time. First to the right, then to the left. Don't stop for anything. If you ever watch mice, that's kind of how they move. They're always worried, they're small, so they're always hiding and moving around kind of quick, quick twitch. But Despero wasn't listening to Furlow. He was staring at the light pouring through the stained glass windows of the castle. He stood on his hind legs and held his handkerchief over his heart and stared up, up, up into the brilliant light. Furlo, he said, what is this thing? What are all these colors? Are we in heaven? Oh, cripes, shouted Furlo from the far corner. Don't stand there in the middle of the floor talking about heaven. Move, you're a mouse, not a man. You've got to scurry. What, said Despero, still staring at the light. But Furlo was gone. He had, like a good mouse, disappeared into a hole in the molding. Space here, so we're jumping ahead in time and we're moving settings. Despero's sister, Merlot, took him into the castle library where light came streaming in through tall high windows and landed on the floor in bright yellow patches. New setting, the castle library, Highlight light every time you see it. Pay attention to it. Pay attention to who we're talking about when we see it as we have this dance between light and dark. Here, said Merlot. Follow me, small brother, and I will instruct you on the fine points of how to nibble paper. <laughs> Merlot scurried up a chair and from there hopped onto a table on which there sat a huge open book. This way, small brother, she said as she crawled onto the pages of the book. And Despero followed her from the chair to the table to the page. Now then, said Merlot, this glue here is tasty and the pages are crunchy and yummy, like so. She nibbled the edges of a page and then looked over at Despero. You try, she said. First, bite some glue and then follow it with a crunch of the paper. And these squiggles, they are very, very tasty. Despero looked down at the book and something remarkable happened. The marks on the pages, the squiggles, as Merlot referred to them, 
arrange themselves into shapes. The shapes arranged themselves into words, and the words spelled out a delicious and wonderful phrase, once upon a time. Once upon a time, whispered Despero. What? said Merlot. Oh, nothing. Eat, said Merlot. I couldn't possibly, said Despero, backing away from the book. Why? Um, said Despero, it would ruin the story. The story? What story? Merlot stared at him. A piece of paper trembled at the end of one of her indignant whiskers. Highlight indignant. It is a vocabulary word. Indignant is a sort of like stubborn. It's just like Pa said when you were born. Something is not right with you. She turned and scurried from the library to tell her parents about this latest disappointment. Despero waited until she was gone, and then he reached out and with one paw touched the lovely words, once upon a time. He shivered, he sneezed, he blew his nose into his handkerchief. Once upon a time, he said aloud, relishing the sound, and then tracing each word with his paw, he read the story of a beautiful princess and the brave knight who serves and honors her. Despero didn't know it, but he would need very soon to be brave himself. Highlight foreshadowing. Obviously, we're going to find out a time where he needs to be brave like a knight. Have I mentioned that beneath the castle there was a dungeon? In the dungeon there were rats. Large rats. Mean rats. Despero was destined to meet those rats. Highlight, more foreshadowing. Destined. We know about destiny from holes. What does destiny mean? Destined means it's going to happen. Reader, you must know that an interesting fate, sometimes involving rats, sometimes not, awaits almost everyone, mouse or man, who does not conform. Highlight conform. That is another word that is just a wonderful word. It means you do what everyone else does. And you can see these mice are like normal mice. They chew on things. They don't know how to read. They try to hide and they're very nervous. Whereas Despero is not. Despero's eyes are open. Despero knows how to read apparently for no reason. And Despero loves it. He doesn't want to be like his family. He wants to be his own mouse. And that is where we're going to stop with chapter three. We will head to chapter four called Enter the P. And P is capitalized, which should tell you something. And we're about to meet a new character, a main character. Hmm. I wonder who that is. We shall find out next. Thank you so much for joining. Please make sure that you have your books handy. Please make sure you hit the like button. You subscribe and leave comments. Tell me what you think. Tell me any suggestions that you have. And please continue this discussion with my class and with your classmates. Tell your classmates to click that like button to subscribe to the channel so that you can follow along with me to one of the greatest children's books of all time. Uh-oh, that's going to get, someone's going to copy that video and add it to, there are a couple videos out there where I say that with every book that I read. I like them all. I love books. And you'll see how much on the next page. Peace.